My name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to give you a complete overview for beginners in Google Drawings. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now Google Drawings is one of my all-time favorite applications within G Suite, but it's also one of the most underrated ones. Now a lot of people know slides and sites and all these other big applications, but Google Drawings is very often forgotten. So this video is going to be a full overview of what you can do in Google Drawings and just why I love it so much. Now, if you want to dive a little bit deeper and you want to revisit some of the parts that we'll discuss, dive into that description. As with all my long form videos, you will find timestamps. Now, first thing you're gonna have to do is open up your Google Drive and then in your Google Drive, you'll want to create a Google Drawings file. As with every application, there are two ways you can do this. You can either go to the top left and you can create a brand new file, or you simply right click in that folder where you want to store the file and then create a file. So let's go ahead and do that first. Now I'm going to right click, create my file. And then the first thing as with everything is you're going to want to title your file because otherwise you'll end up with hundreds and hundreds of untitled documents. So go ahead and call this demo drawings. As soon as you've titled your file, two more icons appear. Now the first is the star icon. Starring a document gives you a shortcut within your Google Drive and that way you can find a document much easier, much quicker, and you can continue work on a document that requires a bit more time investment. The second is moving your document. So you're going to be moving your document into a different folder. I'm happy with where my document is, so I'm going to leave those two icons alone. Now have a look at the entire screen right now. There are two main areas. At the top, we have our menu and our work or toolbar. And then at the bottom, we have our canvas. Now our canvas consists of two areas as well. We've got the gray side, and then we've got this sort of checkered view in the middle. Now this is our workspace. Now the workspace, whenever you're exporting a document or you're going to download this drawing, well, this is the visible area. All the gray area, that will be cut off. You will not see that. And if you download the image, well then that will be lost information. Now that's great when you're referencing. So you can put images in that gray area and you don't have to worry about it accidentally ending up in your final design. So I use the gray area as my sort of my desk area. And then the middle, that's my canvas where I work. Now, the reason you see this checkered area, that's because it is an alpha channel. Now, an alpha channel is transparent. So when you draw anything and you download it as a PNG file, this area will be transparent. However, download it as a JPEG file and it will be turned white. Now, one of the biggest benefits of Google Drawings is that it's vector-based information. So all your images are vector images, and that means you don't have to worry about pixelating anything. Now, let's have a look at our menu at the top. Now, the first one is our file. Now, file is important because this is where we're going to decide on the size of our canvas. So let's go ahead and dive into file. And then let's find our page setups. Now, here you have, again, the standard setup. But what we want is we want to have a custom setup. So go ahead and select custom. As with everything, you can select inches, centimeters, pixels, whatever you like. I'm going to choose centimeters and I'm going to be selecting 50 by 50 centimeters. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and click on apply and you'll see that your canvas adjusts itself. Now there is also that little corner there in the bottom right and you can use it to manually adjust your canvas. However, then you're not being very specific. Now let's look at the two most used drawing tools in Google Drawings. Now the first is our line tool. So when you see we have a line tool here and when we click on that drop down arrow we have a number of different lines that we can use. The first one is a very basic line and again once you've drawn this you can add a beginning and end point to this line. I'll show you in a minute. You also have an arrow, an elbow connector, you have a curved line. Let's have a look at these different lines in action. So let's select our first line going to click on that and then I'm going to draw a straight line onto my canvas. So you can see I can draw this. Now let's say that I want to make sure that it's either horizontal or vertical. Well then I can hold down my shift key. When I hold down that shift key I have a lot more control over how straight my line is. 
And there we go, we're going to let go of that line. And now that we have this line, we can start tweaking it. So go ahead and select a width for your line. So I'm going to change the width for my line into eight pixels. And then I'm going to also change that style. I'm going to change it into a dotted line. So I'm going to select a dotted line. I'm also going to change the color into a red line. I now have a red dotted line. It is much thicker, but I want a beginning and end point to this line. So I'm going to click on that line to select it, and I'm going to select a start and end for my line. So for the start, I'd like a little circle, and for the end, I'd like a square. As you can see here, my line now has two little symbols at the beginning and end of that line. You also have additional formatting options. Now again, this works with every shape on Google Drawings. Click on the shape first and then go to format. So at the top we have our format options. Here you have a lot more control over how your shape acts or how it looks. Now the first thing you can see, we can give it a drop shadow, we can give it a reflection. This really adds to the level of design you can use in Google Drawings. And again, let your creativity run wild, use drop shadows, use reflections and create some amazing designs. In addition to that, we have our size and rotation. Now size and rotation is incredibly important when you are creating documents that will end up being printed. Because this way you can give it a very specific size. Let's say that you want a square that is two centimeters by two centimeters. Well, this is where you can do that. You can adjust that. Now because we have a line, the only thing we can adjust here is the angle that our line is at. So at the bottom, you'll see we can rotate this and I can even rotate this at a 20 degree angle. And there we go. I have my line 20 degree angle with a reflection as well. Now let's have a look at some of the other lines we have available to us in Google Drawings. We have the standard arrow line and then we have an elbow connector. Now the elbow connector is really useful when you are trying to create diagrams or you want to create flow charts and it just has to look good. Now you can see that I can move around this little yellow icon in the middle to really tweak where my elbow connector is going to be changing. So that's a very useful tool to share with your students because it will allow them to draw those diagrams that they can then import into any of the other applications. We also have a curved connector and then we have that curve line. Now the curve line is very different from the other lines because it requires you to draw dots. Now I'm going to draw my first dot and you can see this is now attached to my cursor. And as I draw and I add connections, once you complete that shape, you get your final shape and then all those lines seem to disappear. Don't worry, you can still access them. So just double click on your shape and then you can find those anchor points and you can move them around. Only downside to this is you cannot add anchor points. Now I found this incredibly frustrating when I'm trying to outline a shape or create something and I've accidentally closed my shape and I need to add an anchor point that's not available at the moment. Now what you can do is leave feedback to Google and let them know that that's something you'd like to be able to do. Now where do we leave feedback? Well, as with all the applications, we can go into the help and then we're going to report a problem. Now reporting a problem also means that you're sending feedback to the team responsible. So the more of us that leave that feedback that we'd like to be able to add anchor points, well, the bigger chance we get that Google adds it. Now, more about the other lines. Now, one of my favorite is the polyline. Now, polyline creates an amazing effect and it allows you to create different geometrical structures by simply clicking and adding anchor points. So the same way we did that with our curved line, we're now going to just add anchor points. You can see I can start drawing a shape on my canvas and then as soon as I connect that, I have a shape. As with a line, we have format options, we can change the color, but we also have an additional option that we didn't have with a line and that is now to give it a fill color. Because this is a shape, it has a line, which is the outline or border, and it has a fill, which is the color we see on the inside of this shape. So let's go ahead and select our cursor or select cursor, and let's change both the border and the fill of the shape. I'm going to give it a green fill, I'm going to go to the fill color and I'm going to give it a green fill. Then I'm going to go to the border and I'm going to give it a dark blue border. Now you can see the border is still of a dotted line type because that is what we were using previously. I have to change this manually. It doesn't just go back to the default. So let's go ahead and change that. I'm going to use a full line. 
also going to go into my format options and I'm going to remove the reflection and drop shadow because that is not something I want at this moment and there you go I have my shape seems very straightforward adding shapes brilliant but what about more complex drawings well you can layer your shapes so here you can see I have my first shape and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a copy of this shape I'm going to use Control D which is duplication but you can also simply right click and then copy and paste your shape as you can see here I now have two shapes on top of each other and if I want to rearrange the order or if I want to move the other shape on top of my previous shape well the way I can do that is by right clicking on that shape here I have an extra option that says order now that order allows me to bring it to the front and that means that it's now on top of my other shape Sadly, we do not have a layer window or an overview of where all our items are. So it's going to be a little bit of guesswork there, but you can add various layers into your image. Now, why might you use this? Well, there's a number of different reasons, but the reason I use most often is to add some shading. Because in addition to adding a fill color, well, you can also add a transparency level to that fill. So let's go ahead and go back to this shape on the top and then I'm going to go to the fill now in the fill I'm now not going to select any of these colors I'm going to go to the custom color at the bottom clicking on custom I can now choose a custom color I'm going to leave it to what it is and then at the bottom I'm going to add some transparency so you can see I can make this more transparent and then I'm going to make it a bit darker that means that this is now going to be like shading in my color I'm going to click on OK and I now have my shape and that border is incredibly distracting now I can hear you think okay let's just make the width of the border zero pixels well sadly that is not an option in Google drawings we can however select a different color for the border now the color I'm going to select for my border is transparent in other words you won't see it it's nowhere to be seen and there we go we now have two shapes behind each other we have one shape on top of another that shape has a transparent fill and thus creates the effect of a shading of that shape. Now let's say that I want to move these around. Well, there's a little problem. I have to select everything carefully and then move it around. Well, no more. You can select any number of shapes. You can see here I have two shapes selected and then simply group these shapes. So let's right click on this selection and then let's select group. Now, grouping these shapes makes it much easier for me to move around on my canvas. Yes, you can have groups within groups within groups, no problem. That just means that you have to right click on your group and then ungroup it multiple times to get access to the individual elements. This is great when you're drawing things like an eye or hair with lots of different colors or different shadings. Well, you can just draw it, add it to your drawing group it and then just carry on and that's our line menu now as you can see just using lines there's already a lot you can do in google drawings but it's not all we also have shapes now as you can see here we have a shapes menu and there's a number of built-in shapes now i personally don't use them that often but if that's something that you need well then you can have your shapes right here we can add shapes, you can see we have an oval, we have a perfect circle, but what I like about these shapes is that you can dive into your format menu as we've done with the line and you can give it very specific dimensions. So here I have my format menu open and I can give it a very specific width of let's say two centimeters and then change the height to two centimeters. This gives me a two by two circle and as with the custom shapes we've made before you have a border and a fill you can change the color you can change the width you can do anything you want with those shapes now let's take it a little bit further and let's bring in some inspiration and then let's start designing so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move everything off my canvas so i'm going to move it to the side and i'm going to go to the insert menu now what you'll see here is that you can insert a number of different objects. You can insert charts and lines and word art and what I'm looking for is an image. So I'm going to insert an image. Now here I'm going to select image and then I'm going to search the web. Now as with other applications you can upload an image you already had, you can use your webcam, you can have a URL. It's completely up to you how you do this but I'm going to search the web. 
So let's go ahead and click on search the web. And then on the side, just as with the other applications, you get that search box. So you don't have to leave Google Drawings. You can do everything from within Google Drawings. This is great for those students that get easily distracted and this keeps them within the platform. And also, as you can see here from this little note, these images have been labeled okay for reuse. So it really helps you get the message across that crediting your sources is incredibly important. Now I'm going to choose for an animal and as you've seen in my other videos, usually that's a tiger. So let's go ahead and type in tiger and then we're going to find some pictures of a tiger. Now, I've got a picture here. I'm going to click on that picture and I'm going to insert it into my Google drawing. So let's go ahead and click on insert and it's going to jump into my document. I'm going to move it off canvas. So if you remember that gray area down the side, we're going to move it there and I'm going to move my screen so I can really see what I'm working with. Now here, I'm going to want to use a tool, the polyline, one of my favorites to outline different shapes and then I'm going to bring them onto my canvas. Now, in order for me to really have control over those shapes, I'm going to have to zoom in. Now, the zoom tool can be found on your toolbar. So let's go ahead and select the zoom tool. As with most things in Google Drawings, the left click and the right click on your mouse is going to be very different. So we're going to click left to zoom in and we can right click to zoom out. Now, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to zoom into an area of this tiger that I can easily start drawing. Then I'm going to select my polyline. So let's go ahead and click on that polyline tool. So we're going to go to our drop down box, select polyline. And as you can see from my cursor, I now have my polyline. I'm going to start outlining different areas of this drawing, but do be careful because as I mentioned before, once you start drawing, you cannot add anchor points with a finished or completed shape. So here we're going to outline that first shape, I'm going to close my shape and I now have this picture. I'm going to add another one on top of that. There we go. I'm going to click this and I have another shape. Let's go ahead and zoom out. And if we repeat this step over and over and over, well, then we can start building up this image and we can start making it look like the original picture. The only thing that doesn't quite look like the original tiger is the color. No problem. As you remember from what we've just discussed, we can change the color to whatever we want it to be. So let's select our fill and let's just make this an orange tint. There we go. I have my first two shapes. Now you can repeat this over and over and over. This can be as detailed as you want it to be. I'm going to show you a couple of drawings here that were created by some of my students. And as you can see, using this polyline tool and nothing else, they have created some amazing artwork using just the polyline within Google Drawings. Now, there's a lot more you can do with Google Drawings, but let's just keep it at this for our first beginner's tutorial and let's export our work now. If you remember from what I mentioned before, only that what's on our canvas will be exported. So let's just bring these shapes back onto our canvas so that we can actually see them when we export our image. Now, in order for us to export the image, we're going to go to file and then we're going to select download. Now you can download as a number of different file types. You can download as a PDF and this will retain that vector information. You can download as a JPEG. Sadly, we are going to lose the transparency when we download as a JPEG. We can download as a PNG or as an SVG. You can download as a PNG. This is going to retain that transparency or a SVG, which is a scalable vector image that you can then use in other software. I'm going to select the PNG image. This way, the file will be downloaded. And here we go. We have our demo drawing now. It's available to use in any other application. And as you can see, that tiger image was not added to it because it was off canvas. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, do scroll all the way down, find some timestamps in that description. and Let me know in the comment section below, how are you using Google Drawings? What are some of the things that you really like doing in Google Drawings? And what are some of your issues with Google Drawings? What would you like to see added? And what would you like to see improved on this platform? I hope you found this helpful. If you did, let me know and I will be creating a second follow-up video with more advanced tips and tricks for Google Drawings. This was an introduction. So now let's start drawing on Google Drawings and share links to those images down below because I'd love to see some of your creations. I'm looking forward to watching those. I'm looking forward to reading those comments and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.